Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Adams Brothers Podcast. We are here again with Mr. Tony Sands. He is from D1 Training here in Deerfield Beach, and he's coming back on here to chop it up with the Adams Brothers Podcast about his new book that he got out yes. now, man, yes. and we're happy to have Mr. Tony Sands back here on the Adams Brothers Podcast. Told him, hey, man, what's going on, and welcome back to the show, man. Man, I am glad to be back. And as I stated to you guys the last time that I was on that, you know, my book was coming out and I was going to release it. And once I release it, I was going to make sure you guys get a copy. And then I was going to come back on and we was going to chop it up and speak a little bit on the book so everybody can go and get the book and understand the purpose of the book and why I got in depth of writing this book. And it's so things happen so crazy in life when you when you think about it right. i was supposed to release this book last year pre-pandemic pandemic came i had to push it back and i kept pushing it back uh they was asked people were asking me why don't you go virtual i said well no i don't want to go virtual with my book i would rather let my book marinate and release it at the right time right. everybody you got to put it out. Go ahead and let's do this new virtual thing. I don't want to do virtual. I didn't want to do virtual. I want to make sure that I had live warm bodies at my book release. And I've done two book releases uh, since. And uh, listen, it was great attendance at this book, at both book signing. We had one in Fort Lauderdale and I had one also at uh, my facility up here in Deerfield Beach at D1 of Green Road. And they were both Greatly attended uh, from all ages that I can remember. You, when I say from all ages, we had young kids as early as, early as five years old in the building, uh, and people as old as seventy years old that I knew that were in the building. So when you got that wide range of age, man, it means you are doing something good, and someone wants to hear what you have to say. So as I as I released the book, not knowing. The things that were in the book were leading up to this month. And so when I released it, me not knowing, hey, I released some knowledge. I want to drop some education on people from a standpoint of uh, mental health and how to come back from climbing so high and then plateauing off and how you start to climb again, how you redo your self-esteem, how you change your image and how you rejuvenate your career all over again. All that knowledge and all those nuggets I put into a book, but not knowing that I was leading up on Mental Health Awareness Month, which is this month, because I speak openly about some of the things that I went through in my transition of leaving football. Not football was not, I didn't leave it because of my choice, but because of the choices of others' perception of who I was as a player or what I couldn't do as a player. So it wasn't my my decision. So when it's your decision, it makes it a little easier, but it still has its uh, uh, downside to it. But when it's not your decision and become someone else's decision and you're fighting for something that you have done all your life makes it even tougher. So it was a tough, tough comeback for me, but I was able to come back. So I make sure that I put that in the book. I had released a documentary uh, some years ago and, and it went around and it blew up throughout the social media world uh, because I, you know, a station came to me and they asked me when I released a, uh, a documentary, they wanted to do a story on me. And I, at first I was like, nah, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but then they came back to me and I said, you know, it wouldn't be bad. And we did it. They released it on their station uh, and it went and they had good ratings. So they, I asked them what they give me the cut up version of the show without their commercials. And they did. And I said, well, you know, I'm just going to throw it up on Facebook and see what happens. Well, when it went up on Facebook, it hit over 80,000 oh, viewers. That's good, man. 80,000 viewers for something that I just pushed the button at, not knowing where it would go, and it reached people all 
oh, but I got calls and emails from people all over the place saying, man, listen, your book helped me. I was able to get my children, my young boys and, and young girls that are involved in sports to let them know that, guess what? Football is not all who you are. It is a part of who you are, but it's not the whole makeup of you. And I, you know, just to hear that from people saying how my book helped them was uh, a delight. And then I said to myself, you know what? I might want to write a book and get a little bit more in depth and let people see the true side of who I am. Because I even from the documentary, people said, I never would have knew that about you. Because it was, a, it, it, we understand that in our black community of growing up, we were always told what goes on in the home stays in the home. And to me, that is such a dangerous, dangerous thing to do because one never get a chance to either seek help or open up to anyone else outside of the, the, the four walls that we have within what we call a structure of a home. And people have struggled so much because of that, because we keep so much in, you know, bottled up, especially us as men. We'll hold on things forever and ever. And yes, then when all of a sudden it blows up, it blows up bigger than it really should have if we would have been able to talk it out in the beginning. So, you know, I talk about that and I tell guys and, 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 and women, Listen, it's okay to say, guess what? I don't know it all. I don't have it all. I need help. That's the okay thing to do. So it was a great, you know, and everybody that I've talked to has been selling well. Everybody I've talked to, listen, it's an easy read. It's a nice read. And there's a lot of nuggets in there uh, for anyone that is understanding uh, uh, the flight that I went through and, and, and hopefully that it helped them if they're in a decision of, of, of self-esteem, of how to rejuvenate your self-esteem. So tell us the name of your book, Tony. The name of my book is I Was Before My Time. And how did you come up with that name, I Was Before My Time? Uh, and and uh, for several reasons. I came up with that title is because me playing football back in the 90s and going coming out of college back in 91, now understand that I had a heck of a college, uh, high school career, a heck of a youth league career. I was the first person in the state of Florida as an eighth grader to rush for a thousand yards in what they consider high school football here in South Florida. At that time, I was going through a K, I was going to attend in Broward Christian, which was a K through 12 school. So if you played football as an eighth grader, you played at the 1A, 2A division. So I was the first guy as an eighth grader to rush for a thousand yards there. Then I went on to St. Thomas and uh, got to St. Thomas and broke all St. Thomas rushing records. When I left Brown County, I was Brown County's all time leading rusher, went to the University of Kansas. Well, people told me that I would not make it because at that time I was going to what I call the baddest football conference in college football at that time, the Big Eight. I tell people the Big Eight is what the SEC is now. We were, Big Eight was where all the national champions were coming out of. You had Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Colorado winning the national championship year in and year out outside of the University of Miami. So I went to the baddest conference, a running conference, but here I was 160-some pounds, 5'5". Five, five, five. Well, that was unheard of at that time. When you was thinking about running backs back, back in those days, you was talking about guys like Iron Head, Haywood, uh, 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 Kristen Okoye, guys that are 6'2", 6'3", 225 plus pounds. Well, here I was, a guy that was only uh, 5'6", 160 pounds. So a lot of people doubted what I would do. So I went there, mastered it, what I call mastered the college football game. When I left the Big 8, I was the Big 8 all-time leading a uh, uh, rusher in the single game. I was the NCAA rush, held two NCAA rushing records. Most yards in a single game, most carries in a single game. At that time, it was 58 carries, which still stands to this gate that is in the Hall of Fame, College Hall of Fame. And my yardage were broken uh, at that time. It took 10 years for that to be broken. That was broken by the Damian Tomlinson. So now here I am getting ready to embark on what we call the professional life going through the transition of now transitioning to professional football. Well, 
I had been told that I can go anywhere from, at that time we had 12 rounds, anywhere from the fifth round to the 12th round that I could fall in that window. So I sit and wait and wait and wait. 12 rounds go by and my name does not get called. But now you stated, if I do this, 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 and this, if I do all these things that should put me in the line to be drafted. Well, I wasn't drafted, but I got an opportunity to play with the Arizona Cardinals, which was the Phoenix Cardinals when I played. My career was short with them because I was still fighting that struggle of, ah, oh, you're too small. You won't be, able, you're not an every down back. Uh, we, and at that time, it wasn't the wide open passing attack of what the NFL is right now. Right. So it was, where do we fit this small guy in it? He doesn't fit. So at that time, you know, I was, made a little bit of the crack squad and I was released, went to Canada, didn't like the football that was played up there. And so I decided to come back and, and continue and get my college degree. But despite having a college degree, I still was not able at that time to master my purpose in life and who I was as a purpose, a person and what was my purpose uh, and what I needed to fulfill, to fulfill that void of what was taken from me since I was five years old. How do I master that? So I went ahead and after the documentary, I went to thinking about a title in the book. And I look at a lot of the guys now, you got to think of one of the local guys that were here in Dip. there. Brandon Powell was a guy that I had for years. That is with Buffalo. I trained this young man since I had this young man. When I got him, he was in the third grade. Short guy. Dad asked me, can you make him out of a football player? I said, if he got the heart, I can make him out of a football player because I knew the NFL now was starting to transcend, was starting to change into accepting smaller backs. Right. So now this young man here has a chance, but I got to make sure I give him all the knowledge that I didn't have. So after struggling with all that, after struggling with suicide and things of that nature, not wanting to live because I felt that football was all there was to being a happy person here on earth. After I got through that and spoke with my wife for several occasions, several times a week, she helped me uh, uh, fight this, what we would call everybody's demon. My demon was that mental health thing that I was dealing with. And uh, through her, I got a lot of help. And, and, and when I was writing my book, God, man, I said to myself, because I had heard it so many times, God said, you paved the way for it. It was because of you that I'm able to play this game at this level. It was because of guys like yourself that was short, that was willing to give it all, that was willing to fight for us is the reason why I am here in the NFL. And once I heard that, that clued me in on guess what? God, man, I was before my time, big time. So I had to use that title to make people understand Listen, I was before my time. If I was playing in this day and age, man, I would have been a first round draft pick with all the stats that I had. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I, and, and I looked at your, your uh, I was looking at your stats earlier, man. And uh, I was like, man, uh, you, yeah. you did everything in college, <laughs> man. And it was just looking at your numbers, man, you would think. That you would you would just go in the NFL, man, and and, and, and yes. just just break all kinds of records, man, and because of your height and because of your yeah. weight, the NFL yeah. said that hey, man, uh, we don't think you can make it. Yeah. But in your heart and in your mind, you know you could, but they didn't. Yes, that, yes. That, they didn't. They didn't really look at you and give you the reps and the opportunity to Correct. be that person who you knew you could be, man. And I know that's. Being yes. young, then you you what, man, 19, 21, 22 years old, man. That's, of a, that's a big strain, man, on your uh, on you and your family, man. And, yes, uh, yes. Mental mental illness is real, man. Mental illness yeah. is real. And I watched you talk about it uh last week, I believe it was, with Letitia yes. Rivers, man. And uh you all got you got deep. And I know I heard Letitia say she didn't know that about you. Yeah. yeah. And I know just from you know being <laughs> on the show and you telling us about it, man, but you know. Man, yeah. I admire you, man. You know, not many people would, you know, a lot of people would have checked out a long time ago, man. Yeah. But you still here. Look, look what you look at what you're doing right now, man. You know? And I think it was because I I, I have found what my true purpose was. Once I started training 
athletes. I, I started finding myself giving them the nuggets of how to navigate through this game and how to put yourself in position to be a game changer in this game. Because I knew from being around, like I told you, I, I hate it. Now, understand, I hate it. Even though I was training, I hated football. I would not watch football. I don't think I watched football for two years after I finished. And I had a, a when I finished up, I still got an opportunity to coach college football, but I couldn't stand it. I remember walking into the head coach's office and telling him, listen, man, I don't want nothing to do with this game. I don't want, and, and so happened, a position came op open in the strength department, but it came open for basketball, not football. So I had the opportunity to train Coach Roy Williams, national championship basketball program. We, we had Paul Pierce and all those guys. I got a chance to coach those guys. And it enlightened me a little bit, but it wasn't still wasn't fulfilling. But it, it started showing me, hey, listen, I got, I got some here. And at that point, I trained two guys, got them ready uh, for their draft. And one of them got drafted in the first round, which was Dana Stubblefield. And the other one, Gilbert Brown, got drafted in the second round to the Green Bay Packers. So I told myself, listen, I got some good here. I got some going on. Now, despite still dealing with the demons that I was fighting of not being accepted, and I think that was the biggest part of it, is, not, is being rejected and your self-esteem is shocked because someone told you their perception was not who you was. And if you, and at the time I bought into it a little bit and that's what got me going through the, the, the phases of it that I did. But then I moved back to South Florida, me and my wife and my children, cause they were with me uh, in my latter years in college, my junior and senior year. And um, as I started going, I moved back to Florida. I didn't want to see family. I didn't want to be around family. I didn't really want to be a lot around a lot of people. I found myself staying in the house a lot cause I didn't want to get out. And I knew, that I was dealing with something, but I didn't really know what the something was because mental health was not spoken about, especially in the black community. Right. If you reached out and help and, and asked for help in our community, it was told either you was weak as a man or that you are crazy. Not knowing that it, it, neither one of those titles are the right title to put on anyone. But it is those were two titles that scared people from going to seek help right. from anyone. And so once I was able to navigate through it with my wife, she said, you more than I talked to some of my coaches. They said, listen, your life is great. You have been a blessing. You will be a blessing to many more people to come. You just stay in the fight. Stay with it. Stay conscious. I started reading. I got into uh, a lot of things started finding myself counseling other young men and the light clicked on that I got something that I can be a blessing to other people uh, just by the knowledge that I have. Don't waste that and throw that all away because of someone else's perception. of it. So uh, I made sure that I got that. Other than your wife, who, who like motivated you to get back out there and like get back on track to like, you know, this, I have a purpose in this world, man. I need to go out here and start training. Other than your wife, who my, motivated you? Uh, was it a friend? My, was it an old buddy from college? Who, who motivated my, you to get back out there and start, like, getting back into it? My coaches, uh, coaches that I'd had in the past, people like Coach George Smith that's at St. Thomas, uh, Coach Glenn Mason, um, who was my college coach. So I got opportunities to speak with a lot of people such as them and just say, Tony, you – you had a stellar career. You are a blessing to others, man. Just keep it up. Uh, you know, you're a great trainer. And then once I started seeing that I'm able to take guys and train them and make them excel on the football field, I started telling myself, okay, this is what my calling was. You got to remember when I started my training business back here in South Florida, I started here in Deerfield. I started in Deerfield Beach, Florida, right at Westside Park. To where I started bringing, I was the first guy trainer to bring, actually bring professional athletes into the inner city to train. They weren't doing it at the time. I was the first one I bought. I would, at any point in time in Westside Park, we would have 15 to 20 NFL guys right there on the field. Because, And I said to myself, 
I wanted to show young men that was pursuing this dream that was rather they was playing little league, college, or high school football, that this is a job. This is a business. There's a lot go into it. So I got the pleasure to do that to a lot of young men just sitting there watching us train. And then I invited a lot of some of them in to train with us. Train right beside NFL guys because, like I told you, when I was playing, I knew one NFL guy, and I didn't know him. I just knew of him because I heard people speaking on the guy, and that was James Jones from uh, 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 Ely High School that I had never seen before. So it was like a something that was a mirage down the street. If you're in a desert, you think you see water. That's the only thing it was to me. But I, because I had never seen one, I didn't see probably embark on a professional athlete probably until once I got into college. Once I got into college, and that was because my uncle Michael Irvin had got drafted at that time by the Dallas Cowboys, and that's when really a reality came in the high school that hey, this could be possibly could be a career for me. So, it I, I to say. It was a one thing I look at. It, it was the stern will amongst the car that I'm driving to turn me in the direction that I am in now. Wayne, yes, uh, Tony, back to your book for a moment. Yes, how long did it take you to to write your book? Uh, it took me approximately, probably about because now, mind you. Like I told you, I had already had a documentary, so it didn't take long because I was able to refer back to that a lot because I'm, I'm, I'm more of a visual type of guy than a writer type of guy. So my, I kept, my wife said, you got to put it in, you got to write it. I said, well, oh, maybe it's, it's tough for me to just sit and write all day. So she bought me a video a, a tape recorder and told me, you just take talk every day about something about what you want to put in it, break it down into the chapters, and then we will get someone to help you put it on in words. So that's what we did. We, we, we got deep into it as I started recording myself um, every time, and then I referred back to the documentary. I think I'd say the documentary was a blessing to me to do because it helped me even when I am trying to break down the chapters in the book. That was a blessing to me. So as I, as I started writing, I just started seeing things and you know, I speak about it. And as before I was able to get out of writing the book in the first part of a phase of getting into the book, my father passed uh, and he passed, my father passed June 28, uh, 2017. I can always, I will always remember that date for two reasons because it was, it's my wife's birthday and it was the day that my father passed. So I will always remember uh, the date of, my father's passing and, and and at that point my father was the first one to get me started into football he got michael Irvin started into football because he would take both us to football practice each and every day when we were young and uh as it going i i felt it was only fitting to dedicate the book uh to my father so to write the book man it was it was easy i'm a, as a matter of fact i'm in the process of writing my next book that's as we speak. Yeah, yes, yes. I was going to ask you too, how did you juggle writing the book with your busy schedule that you had at the time? You know, I, 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 I set a schedule. I set a schedule for myself. My assistant helped me. Uh, assistant Erica, Erica helped me a lot to make sure that I set a schedule that I said, even if it's 10 minutes out my day, I'm going to make sure that I do something in regard to my book. So if it was 10 minutes, if I had to say something in the recorder to fulfill the book, I did. If we had to take videos or pictures for it, I did. If you and, and the one thing about it, I, I like I say, I've been I've been blessed, man, to come across some of the most influential people in the world. I mean, when you look at it across the landscape of life, one of the you got to figure here I am on set with one of the most notorious gangsters, one of the, to me, one of the best gangster movies ever put on this earth, Scarface. Mm. You you know, I get opportunity to be on set with Scarface, you know, and he wasn't, and, and it's so crazy because he wasn't, he's not a picture person. You very rarely see people taking pictures with Al Pacino. You may see a, a picture of him up in, he got a picture of himself up in their home, but you very rarely get a chance to see 
one taking a picture with Al Pacino. And I, I, you know, I had a chance to meet with him. Uh, if you look through the book, man, uh, Kevin Hart, uh, I mean, you name it, we, uh, you name it. I've been, you know, I've been blessed to be a part of something that they were doing or called upon to come and do something for them. So man, listen, my life has been a, when I look back at it now and I, and, and I think about the journey, I always say a man, a man is always measured through distance travel in their life. That makes up a man. It ain't where you at. Is able, are you able to get up from the situation that you're in and to change the outcome of your life? And if you can do that, just that alone is a blessing to someone else out there that you may not think that needs some help. You can offer that help. May rather it's through a word that you may say that may pique their interest to let them know, hey, listen, I'm going to be okay out here in this world. There is people out here that, that are willing to help if I just open up and tell myself and be humble enough to say that I don't know. And that's some of the stuff that I speak about in my book. You got to be humble uh, is the biggest thing. My mom used to always tell me, remember, be pleasant to those people while you are on your way up because you never know who you will see on your way down. And that was a word that stuck with me throughout my, my journey of, of what I've done. And where I've been, I always stay humble. I'm, 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 you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of kids tell me now, sometimes, Coach, I ain't never knew you accomplished all that. Because I don't speak so much on that because I want one to understand. I want them to see me first for who I am. And then once you follow up with that, your own self, then it makes you appreciate the things and the nuggets that I'm able to give you. But if I lead in with that, that's all you know. You don't see the person behind who did that. Yeah, and when I started reading the book, I started it the same day you, you gave it to me. Yes. And I just, I saw how close you and your dad was yes. uh, in the beginning chapters. And that's something that a lot of kids in this day and time do not get a chance, especially in the black household where they yes. don't have, their parent there or even even their parent being involved in their life like your dad was and I was just reading and I just can remember just seeing in there how happy you was when you yes. he took you to the games. Yes, you and my yes. to the games. And yes, man. That, it was that really a struck that really struck me. Yes. Yes, it was a blessing to me. So you know I continue to say that it is a blessing uh in life that we go through. And there's people, you know, my dad was a blessing to many others, man, you know, and he was a Vietnam veteran. So, you know, I, I, I can't ask for much more than than, than that uh, out of my father. My father stuck with me through thick and thin in spite of him and my mom separating. One thing that I, uh, that is a blessing for a man like him to be able to stay best friends, because it doesn't happen that often in this society, to him and my mom to stay best friends was the biggest thing that they always said that we wanted to make sure that our separation wasn't a division among my their children to where we now have to choose a parent or choose a side. We didn't have to do that. If I decided to wake up at my mom's house, I kid, if I decided I wanted to wake up at my dad's house, hey, mom, listen, I'm leaving school. I'm heading over to my dad's. Dad, hey, I'm going to stay with my mom. That's the way our life was to where we saw our, my parents they were truly, when I say truly, truly, they were truly best friends. So, you know, it was a blessing. And, and, and also, Tony, a lot of people ask me and Daryl all the time about, especially when they saw you on here and about you were writing a book, yes. they ask us uh, numerous of times, how do you get into, how do you start writing a book? How, actually, how do you go to the publisher? It, can you at least uh, uh, yeah. give that uh, yeah. give us some insight? I, what, and everybody must understand, you know, I tell people, every person has a story, a unique story that can help someone else. But you must, first of all, find out what your true story is. And once you find out what your true story is, then everything else falls into play. Everything else falls into play at that point. You, you write, you get into it, you write it down, and you make sure that you have everything in place 
for it. So as I started writing my book, I read, I, you got to write it first. And that's the number one thing that you got to do. You got to write first. Once you write it, then everything else takes place, man. You, you, you get a chance to really truly, then a publisher, once you write it, if they feel like it is worthy, then they go and, you know, they seek you out because what you got is, is, is powerful and knowledgeable. So that was the thing. And once I wrote it, I found a publisher that can publish it. And once they published it, listen, it was it was there and they wanted to be a part of it because of what, what it is. You got to make it meaty. You got to make it juicy. You got to make it what it is. You know, and once you do that, man, it is it is a blessing. Okay, yes, because definitely a lot of people ask us all the time. Matter of fact, just a week ago, one of our friends who has a story about uh, her struggle through cancer, and she was asking us about it. And uh, it's just good information to know at least yeah. how to start. Like you were saying earlier about your wife uh, told you to just bought you a tape recorder and told you to, yes. you know, record everything. So that was that's good knowledge to know. Uh, yes, Tony. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I mean, and that's it. And, and just start. You just start writing, and before you know it, man, you have a whole book. Uh, you have a whole book to put down and put it on. Put on paper. Yeah. So, so do you plan on uh, uh, going on any more tours to promote the book? Oh uh, yeah, we listen, man. We've been, we've been all. I've been all over the country. As a matter of fact, I just shot one for uh, Channel Ten. I mean, I've been on on news outlets pretty much in every region of the country. You got to understand because it is also, and it was, that's why I told you, it was a blessing that I released it when I released it because now this month is a uh, mental health month. And, and a lot of people don't like to talk about it. A lot of athletes don't like to talk about it. So being on the book tour, man, it's been a pleasure. We've, I, like I say, I've been all over Channel 10. We just did that one for Channel 10 that'll be coming out. Uh, I was in Atlanta, in Kansas City, in LA, in Dallas. Uh, on the news in New York. So it's been, we've been all over, man. South Florida, I was in Palm Beach, uh, did two stations, did ESPN, did Fox 29, did Channel 13 and Channel 10 uh, and Channel 6 just picked us up. So I'll be on Channel 6, but Channel 10, I'll be airing on uh, possibly this weekend. Okay. All right. Thank you very much Thank for that you. information. We will be we will be looking out, and you're a friend of the Adam Thank Brothers you. podcast. And, Thank you, man. And you always welcome back here anytime. I know you're a busy man, so we don't yeah. want to hold you. Definitely <laughs> yeah. want it to, to, before to, to, we, But before we let you go, tell everybody where can we where can we purchase your book from? Well, you can go. You can do two things. You can contact us over either at D one uh, for one, or you can go to Amazon. I am on Amazon. I'm getting good ratings on Amazon. So you can go to Amazon. Go to Amazon, type Tony Sands in in the search bar, and it'll come up, Tony Sands book. And this the first book that comes up on there. And uh, listen, support. Go out, support. Listen, it is a great book. And I always say, it, it, you know, because I wasn't, I tell people I wasn't the brightest student in the world. But as my life go on now to call to stay, that I can say that I am Tony Sands, the author. Wow, that's that's strong. You know, you always see her, even when I travel, and sometimes when we travel, you, you know, you and, and you sitting in a certain place on a plane, people think two things about you. Either you're a rapper or you're a football player, but yeah. they never think that we are business people or that we are author, man. To say that I'm an author, man, is listen, I I, I can't speak how blessed I am to have that title now attached to my name. So it's been a blessing. My life has been a joy. And I think I love the struggles that I went through that I was able to come out of and be blessed to be where I'm at. Hey, yeah. man, we're speaking and with- we're proud of you. Yeah, we're Thank all you. proud of you. We're speaking with Mr. Tony Sands. He's the owner and CEO of D1 Training in Deerfield Beach, Florida. He just released his new book, and it, the title of the book is called I Was Before My Time. And you yes. can find the book on Amazon if you want to stop through and talk to Tony and talk about the book and buy your book. Yes. I'm sure you can talk to him over at D1 Training yes. in Deerfield Beach. So we want you all to go out there and pick up this book. And not only pick up the book, read it and apply it yes. to your life. And, then, and, and if you know somebody that's going through these same things here, Give them the book, you know, turn them on, let them call Tony and talk to Tony. Amen. We can all learn something and 
and, and, and move forward and prosper from someone else, you know, if, if someone else's struggle. So, uh, yes, Tony, yes. man, we want to thank you for coming on the Adam Brothers podcast, man. You welcome. Thank you, my brother. Here anytime, man. Anytime you need me, let me know. Right. Give me a ring and All I'll right. be back. Thank All you. right. All right. Tony Sands, have a good evening, brother. <laughs>